Hello, this is Tor from IDCON again, and this is the beginning of our new series, How to Document Cost-Effective Preventive Maintenance Tasks, and this is part one. The first thing we need to do is to, of course, lay the groundwork for documenting PMs. So there's a few concepts that we need to go through so we understand exactly the background and the theory of how to uh, achieve the correct tasks. So the first thing we're gonna go through is the definition of preventive maintenance because there's a bunch of different definitions out there. Um, we'll go through the way we define it. Um, of course, there's not one single way it has to be, but just so you understand where we're coming from. So how we define it, it is all actions that prevents a failure from happening or finds a failure early. So two things, we either prevent a failure from happening or we find a failure early. Now, what is a failure? Real quick, we're gonna come back to this a little bit later in this series, but a failure is really an unacceptable condition. So that could be, for example, an electrical motor that is dirty, it's still running, it's running just fine, but uh, it may be running at, <clears throat> let's say 250 degrees Fahrenheit. That's an unacceptable condition. Now, if we clean off that motor, maybe the motor becomes cooler and it still runs fine. Or if we don't clean it, perhaps it goes to what we call a breakdown, where it ceases to function. So that's a breakdown versus a failure. So failure is something that is unacceptable. We have three parts. So on the left side, we have prevent failures. And on the right side, we have detect failures early. So if we look at essential care, it's what we call essential care of equipment that can prevent failures. Examples of that could be lubrication, it could be alignment of equipment, alignment of shafts, detailed cleaning of equipment. It could be operating practices, how do we actually operate equipment. Installation practices, how do we install it from the beginning? Do we have the right torque? Uh, do we install bearings correctly? Or do we use a sledgehammer to put them on the shaft? Uh, filtration of air, water, lubricants, and of course adjustments. All these things are things that directly impact the life of equipment. You can prolong it or, or, or make it shorter how well we do these things. The little box you see here in the middle, FTM, stands for fixed time maintenance. Another way to prevent failures of the equipment is of course just to change it out. So you can just take the motor, we run for a couple of years and we just change it out, assuming we know the life of that motor. Motor is probably a really bad example because we don't know life of motors. But um, you could say that some people take, uh, for example, felt on a paper machine. We may just say, we're just going to change it out every six weeks um, because we know that life is roughly six weeks. The other side is detect failures early. The second part of our PMs. So detecting failures are early called inspections, condition monitoring. Some pe people call it predictive maintenance. I prefer condition monitoring. It's more encompassing with everything that we talk about. So uh, it could be subjective methods for inspecting equipment, look, listen, feel, smell, or it can be objective, where we use some type of tool to measure something. So it could be a vibration can be measured, right, or a temperature, we'd like to have a temperature gauge instead of just feeling the piece of equipment. So we become more objective. And that, that goes for everything, such as infrared, it can be different pressures, current, whatever whatever, mesh, whatever it is we'll measure. So I have two parts of our preventing maintenance definition, preventing failures and detecting failures early. So we need to write our PMs so we cover these different actions that we need. Now, there's one little caveat here. Um, if you could look at this slide, there's the PM definition, I think it's really important to add the preventing uh, actions that are not repetitive. So there's certain re actions that are not repetitive that go to patient program. So for example, alignment, we're just going to do that when we install it or balancing or other installation practices. We're going to do that when we install the equipment. Then we're not going to go and install every six months or every three months, right? Or we're not going to go and use to align it, realign it, because we have vibration to tell us when something is misaligned. Uh, operating practice, huge. But it's important to include these in the definition of preventive maintenance that we do things right the first time. 
So the preventive maintenance definition includes these. When we talk about documenting a preventive maintenance program, those are the repetitive actions. We may want to change the definition slightly to all repetitive actions that prevents failures or finds failures early. So we just ensure that we get the right scope for our documentation process. Well, that's the start of part one, documenting cost-effective preventive maintenance. And uh, I hope you come back for part two and forward. And please click subscribe down here and see you next time. Mm -hmm.